The question is, how do we know the Big Bang actually happened? Physicists are very convinced that something like 13.7 billion years ago, all the matter that there is in the world, the galaxies, the billions of stars, the planets, and even space-time itself came into existence. Now that's a colossal statement. After all, every civilization of the past has had its own view about creation. And if you belong to one civilization, you had to believe what was said to be true. There was no way to check it. But science doesn't operate that way. And so the question is, what makes these physicists so sure about themselves? The answer has at least three parts. To understand the first one, let's go back something like a hundred years ago. There was an American astronomer by the name of Edwin Hubble. He was looking at the distant galaxies. He had this powerful telescope, but he also had what is called a spectroscope. So he could see how fast the galaxies were moving. And what Hubble observed was something very interesting. What he saw was that the further away a galaxy is, the faster it is moving. And so the furthest galaxies are moving the fastest. I mean, fastest away from us here on Earth. Now, if you think about this in terms of a bomb explosion, when a bomb explodes, the center of the bomb remains wherever it was, but the outside, it moves away. The fragments are moving away very fast. Okay, now let's imagine that you take a video of the expanding galaxies. So they're moving outwards like that in your video. And now you decide to run the video backwards. So all these galaxies, thousands and millions of them, start coming back and they eventually converge upon one single point. That's the Big Bang. That's the center of the universe. That's where the universe started from. And how long would it take you to run that video backwards? That's the age of the universe, about 13.7 billion years. Well, today we have much better observational equipment. We have telescopes out in space which can look much further into the depths of the universe. And they can make much better measurements of the expansion speed as well. And they find more or less what Hubble had found, but with greater accuracy. And so now let me come to the second reason. It's incredible, but astronomers, observational astronomers, they can look into space and they can estimate, actually very reasonably accurately calculate how much hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium and other light elements are present in the cosmos. It's not actually hard to do that because every element releases light of a particular color. So although you and I obviously cannot go out into space, catch a piece of matter and bring it back with us, but the light coming from there reaches us and looking at that light, we see immediately whether it is this element or that element. In fact, every element is stamped. It has its own fingerprint, thumbprint. So if you look at the sky, you find that there is something like 73 or 74% of hydrogen, 23 or 24% of helium, smaller amounts of lithium, beryllium, and so forth. And now, the wonderful thing is that this was exactly what was predicted in 1948 by an astronomer, George Gamow, and his student, Alpha. What Gamow and Alpha did was to say that, okay, let's assume that the Big Bang actually happened. If it did, can we calculate how much of these light elements there are in the world? 
The way they did their calculation is as follows. In the early universe, which was extremely small and also extremely hot, there were neutrons and protons. And normally, neutrons and protons, they stick to each other and they form deutrons. But when the universe was very, very hot, they were colliding all the time. And so the neutrons and protons could not stick together. But as the universe expanded, it became cooler. And that allowed for the neutron and proton to stick together, make the deutron, and then for these deutrons to go and hit other deutrons. And of course, also other neutrons and protons. In this way, the light elements were formed. So what's fascinating is that alpha and gamma, they were able to calculate the amount of hydrogen that there would be in the universe, the amount of helium and the other elements, lithium, of course, much smaller amounts. And they came up with exactly this figure. That was later verified. Well, of course, today we have much better calculational techniques. We, can, uh, we know nuclear physics so much better. And we can do those calculations more accurately on the computer. All this is perfectly consistent with what we observe. And so the distribution of light elements is a good, strong proof of the Big Bang. Notice that I'm not talking about the heavier elements. I'm not talking about oxygen or carbon or iron or whatever. Those were not formed in this way, but that's a separate story. And now let me give you the third reason for why we think the Big Bang happened. I told you earlier that in the early universe, there were neutrons and protons. And they cooled, they made helium and lithium and so forth in the first three minutes of the beginning of the universe. Now, there were also at that time electrons and there were particles of light called photons. But the electrons couldn't stick to the protons because it was so very, very hot at that time. And so if there was a particle of light, a photon that was, that started from here, well, it would be scattered from the electrons or the protons and move in a very zigzag way before it could go from here to here. Now, as the universe expands, it becomes cooler and cooler. And so something like 370,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe was cool enough so that the electrons could be captured by the protons and neutral atoms could be formed. What this meant was that the photon would now be able to traverse very large distances without being knocked from its path. In other words, the universe became transparent in the same sense that a glass of milk becomes eventually transparent as you pour more and more water into it. So at 370,000 years, the universe suddenly undergoes a transition. It becomes transparent. Now, this is something that George Gamow had predicted. And so the question was, can we look for the signatures of the universe having become transparent? In 1965, and this is quite coincidentally, there were a couple of scientists working at Bell Labs. These scientists were not looking for the Big Bang or anything related to that. They were doing something much more mundane. They were working with microwaves and they were trying to establish communication with satellites. But they were very frustrated because their equipment was yielding a very hissing kind of noise. It was going like this, hiss. They couldn't understand what was going on. They thought that uh, maybe it is pigeon droppings on their microwave dish. Then they thought maybe they should cool the receivers down. They did everything that they possibly could do, but it didn't work. 
that hiss wouldn't go away. And so they eventually published their papers. They got the paper published, of course, but uh, it turned out that what they were actually looking at was the early signature of the universe, what had happened 370,000 years after the Big Bang. Now, today, this cosmic background microwave radiation, CBMR, is a very strong proof of the correctness of the Big Bang theory. Today, we have so many satellites up in the sky specifically looking for this. Not only do they see the CBMR that was seen by Penzias and Wilson, but they also detect very, very tiny wiggles in it, fluctuations. And this is actually telling us about the very, very early history of the universe. To explain this concept of the cosmic microwave background radiation better, let me say that if you and I had a special pair of glasses and we could look all around us, we would see this gentle glow and it would be there everywhere. It would be around the earth, it would be in the Milky Way and it seems to have no obvious source. This is why it's such a powerful indication. So, we now have three strong arguments in favor of the Big Bang. The expanding universe, the correct amount of light elements predicted and observed, and of course, this background radiation which I've discussed. This doesn't mean that all the problems of the Big Bang have been resolved. Science never makes such a claim, but it does say that we are on very firm grounds. However, I'm sure there must be a lot of questions in your mind. In particular, the obvious question that this expansion of the galaxies was observed from Earth. So it seems to be the case that we here on Earth are the center of the Big Bang. But isn't that sort of absurd? After all, why should we be of particular significance? This is an issue that we shall take up in the next program.